Hi there, I'm Adrian Salisbury, SLR Coaching, and in this video, we're just gonna have a look at how to mask out areas within a photo. You've seen those ones where part of it is black and white, part of it is color. We're having a go at one like that. Um, a little bit more detailed in this one, but let's jump in and have a look. Okay, so thank you, Alicia, Alicia, um, for sending in a photo to me. It was based on the tutorial that I did with the blowing glitter, where I get a child, put glitter in their hands, blow it, and it just comes up, looks wonderful. Um, the link below to that tutorial will explain a little bit more. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, Alicia, Alicia, I'm gonna say Alicia, forgive me if it's wrong. Um, Alicia, I'm just going to pull on here where you sent me this picture across, you'd got some red glitter that was coming up, but you turned it into black and white and you said, how can I just pull the red out on its own? So that's what we're doing. I'm working away on my Mac here. So I'm just gonna drop that image into Lightroom. Uh, import it, it can stay where it is. So I tick down here, let's go over into the develop tab. And um, okay, so first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna make a virtual copy. So we've got two Im two copies now of this image. So if I edit one, um, we've still got the original one there. Now I could just go straight over here and actually let me just pull back your original. Yeah, so you've taken this down. There's a style on that, I think. I don't think that's just, a, you haven't just dropped down the saturation. Uh, a lot of people when they're just changing over to a black and white just simply grab the saturation tool, drop it down and there it is, it's black and white. Um, I've got down here a whole load of presets and they're free ones, I haven't paid for any of these. Uh, you can get hold of loads of um, free presets, you can see the names of them actually on here. But let me just pick off some of these um, ones here and we'll have a play. As you can see, some of them not good at all. They're just picking up the different channels. But what I'm trying to do, first of all, is to create a black and white image that we can start from. Um, and then we're gonna bring the color back in. If I just take this straight into Photoshop as a JPEG, it won't let me play around with these sliders. And um, the effects that I've got, that I'm wanting to use really on here, I've only got in Lightroom. So bear with me a second. Let's find a preset that we think we like. This is already slightly grainy. I think um, ISO was quite high on this image. Um, understandably, because you're trying to get a nice fast shutter speed, uh, no criticism there. But actually some of these uh, uh, presets that you put on, put some grain in. Um, I'm just jumping through, trying to find something that I think I like the look of that will work here. Young child as well, so we don't wanna put grain on her face particularly. Uh, let's go with that. Let's pull. Um, what I might just do on this crop is to straighten that up slightly. And now I've now taken the proportion. Actually, no. Let me keep the keep it in proportion. There um, means coming in a bit, but I just want her a little bit more lined up. Eyes are through that top third there, that works. Um, and I'm gonna put a vignette on here, as Alicia had done. Um, just kind of brings that magical touch, I think, to it. I'm gonna take that grain off a bit, as I say. Oh, the young child, I don't really want that grain on her face. Okay, do I want some sharpness in there? Okay, so I think that's, we're happy with that. This is, this is where we're gonna end up. Um, what I haven't done, I'm just looking back at Alicia's original one. She'd put a much stronger contrast in there. Um, yeah, quite a different effect really. 
and I think that clarity is probably up quite high as well. Right now what I'm going to do is, because we've got a different crop now on this second photo, um, I need to copy this over. So what I'm going to do is go um, con Command C, copy on here. I'm going to check none apart from the crop. The only thing I want to carry across here is the crop. Go on to my second one, Control V, and it's now taken that cross. So I've got my two different images. This is the black and white one. This is the color one with all the detail in there. Uh, I haven't touched the original photo. We've just applied this black and white to it. So now what I'm going to do is to pick both of these images up. Uh, Command A is uh, going to select everything there. If I right click and go um, edit in and I'm going to select Photoshop and I'm going to take the option to edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments that I've made already applied on here. This will now open up Photoshop, um, give me my two images and what I want to do is drop one over the top of the other. So I'm going to, this is going to stay as my original and I'm going to pick up my black and white one. I need to make this a layer, so I double click the background, make it a layer. Now I can drag this off and onto the next picture. Okay, and then if I use my guides it will line that up. So you see what I've done, <clears throat> if you're not used to, it might be slightly different layout on your computer, but you're looking for the layers panel. My background layer here, when I hide this one, is the original photo, and I've just, from this other photo, picked it up, moved it over on top of this one. So now I've got a new layer over the top, and you can see how the two are going to work. So all I'm doing now is I'm trying to the idea is I'm masking out. It's a bit like if I'd laid, um, if I was doing this in print form and I'd laid my black and white photo over the top of my color one and I'm literally cutting out those holes now so that you can see the photo from underneath. That's all we're doing here, we're layers. We're putting one layer on top of another one. And it's this tool at the bottom of here called a layer mask. And what you need to be careful of in here, I've done this plenty of times, there's a little white box around it. If it's in there, you're editing the photo. If it's over here, it's adjust, adjusting the layer mask. Now I go to a paintbrush tool, and um, if it's anything other than black and white, then just tick on that little symbol to put it back. And with the X key, see how that's jumping as I press the X key, it's going from black to white. And now I've got, I'm going to show you in a larger size, a paintbrush tool. So all I did there was to right click and it brings this up and you can see the size of my brush is changing. So let me just start off with a larger colour here. Now what's going to happen, it isn't going to paint black onto um, our young lady here. When I do black onto this, it's going to cut through the paper in effect. It's going to cut through this black and white layer and pull out the colour one from below. So look at what happens, yeah? As I'm painting on here, and if you see over this area, you can see a tiny little dot. It's giving a clue there that it's cutting through the paper. When I just hide the background, you'll see that it's going to nothing below. So I'm not applying any colour here, all I'm doing is, and as I adjust the size of this brush, I am just slicing this through and showing the background colour behind. So this is, you know, you might have seen wedding photos or other photos, there's one on the community page as well, um, with some flower or some poppies there, a reef of, flat, of poppies, that just that one has been selected. This is how this is done. Uh, I'm able to go over this and just pick off one area to be able to bring the colour through from. And the beauty of this, if I make a mistake and I go outside of my line, all I've got to do is change this colour back from black to white and it's going to put that black layer mask back in. So I press X to change that over, paint over the same thing now with this and look it's just put that back. Why is that good? Well if I've just gone over my lines a little bit I can then bring that back in. So I can do it this way um, and just bring all that back in. I could reset it um, to 
be honest, it's as quick just to paint over that now. The other thing I could do is to select to paint the bucket and just drop that color on and it will totally whitewash it. Okay, so there we're back to this image. Um, and you guessed it. This, I did say it was gonna take some patience. I am going to adjust, so I can adjust um, the size of the paintbrush I've got and the hardness, whether I want to have a sharp, hard edge or a soft kind of blur to the edge of it. But we're gonna go, well on these bigger ones, we'll leave the hardness down a bit and we'll go slightly larger. And I'm just going to uh, start with these larger. We need to just change this over. So I X again to go back to some color. Um, now I can just by pressing Z, it changes to a magnifying glass. If I click and zoom in, we can come in a bit closer. Um, now some of these there isn't any color to, and um, you'll know why that is probably, if, well, if, let's have a look. We'll close this off, look at the original. They're bright white, it's just the, the way that the sun's caught it and the reflection there. So I'm working down in sizes. Once I think I've caught the um, large ones, if I don't like it, I can either do just Command Z and go back. I'm gonna bring this size down now to a smaller size and I'm gonna go over again. Um, I can just, I don't have to do just a dot, I can paint slightly with this anyway. Um, and I am just touching on these dots as they are. Alicia, I wonder if you were thinking there's gonna be some magic tool in here that selected out just that color. I'm afraid not. And I have to say, a lot of retouching work is as slow and um, painstaking as this. But um, hey, it's like playing Bejeweled or one of these games, right? You're just kind of hitting the dots. I'm gonna speed this up so you can see me working through it, but you don't have to sit and wait for half an hour for a video. Now those ones on a hand, there's not a lot of color to them, is there? Now if you're struggling with that and um, you're getting to a point where it's hard to see where these are, what I can do is actually take the opacity of this layer down. So just while I'm working on it, I'm taking down the black and white and as long as I come back in here and I'm adjusting, um, I can actually see the colored spots coming through. I'm really just wanting to pick up on those brighter ones. Lots of them over here. I wonder if I can pick a whole area there. And I'm just going to adjust that opacity again. So it's helping me just see through a bit, but um, I do need to see some black and white. Opacity back up to 100. I'm just wondering if I can paint a whole batch through there. It's basically all red. There are still hundreds of pieces that I've missed.
Well, there you go, Alicia. I'm going to stop at that point there, but you can see what's happened. Um, I'm on here. I've got to make sure that that layer is selected, that mask, and it is, yeah, slow kind of way of working through this, clicking on the spots you want to come through, zooming on it so you can see more detail, and then it's just pulling through the color from the previous, uh, from, the, from the layer below it. You're cutting out holes. Um, but there's our original, and there it is with the color coming through. I could keep going. There are more spots that I can see on here, but um, I really am just doing this as a demo back to you to show you how to do it. Um, I'd like you to go and have a go and see if you can get better results than that. Um, but there you go. That's what happens. That's how this is done. Um, I can just export that out now. Um, export, uh, save for web. Um, there we go. We're going to replace that and save that one out. So I shall put this back up to the group. Uh, if you're not on the group, then please, I really encourage you to get involved. This is where this came from. Um, ideas like this, uh, you post up there the challenges and the stuff you're struggling with, and I'll as quick as possible try to respond. Uh, but if you've enjoyed this, please uh, like, subscribe, uh, join my group, follow along, whatever you want to do, you know the score, uh, just stay in touch. Uh, thank you very much.